I've just found a fix for a fatal Ally X floor. As you know, on this channel, I've been absolutely loving the Ally X just here. I, it, yeah, it's blowing my mind. And I love playing it handheld, but, 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 I am playing it docked as well. It's so good to dock on like a portable screen or onto my TV. And recently I've started building up an eGPU, more content on that coming soon. So I've been using this a lot on my TV and it has been incredibly frustrating. So you know when you go into the control panel and you've got the controller modes, you've got desktop, you've got gamepad and auto, which work wonders when you're actually using it handheld, right? But when you're docked, a, you can't open the control panel unless you get up, go to the Ally X and press control panel, right? And then even then, if you were using an external controller, those don't apply. It only applies to the built-in embedded controller, right? So if you're playing with a controller docked, you cannot operate Windows with the controller. This is a major flaw because they let you do this in handheld mode, you can switch freely between a controller to navigate Windows or force gamepad mode on to act like a controller or have it on auto, which works really well so that you boot up a game and now you're you know, using the controller, back out of the game, close it. You're now in Windows. Oh look, I can control it with the controller. Why can't you do this docked with a dedicated you know, external controller. I don't understand why that's not a thing when it's already built into the system, right? So what that's been leading me to do is have a separate keyboard and mouse, a wireless keyboard and mouse. I've got an all-in-one Logitech, so it's got a keyboard and a touchpad and stuff just there, which is how we use the Ally X docked onto the TV. It's really frustrating. And especially now I've been using this eGPU to get like really good performance. I'm using it docked more and more and more because I'm just like chilling on the sofa, right? I'm always using this freaking keyboard and I had to find a solution. And I've just done that. I have done just that using a bit of software that's almost 10 years old. This is two pounds here in the UK, one pound 99. And this app is called Controller Companion on Steam. This does not need Steam open to run and you can open it on startup. So you can force it to open on startup and it can have administrator privileges as well. So you know when you get the little admin pop-ups when you open a game and it says like, oh, you've got to press yes or no or whatever. It is a life changing bit of software and Asus, rip it off, just steal it. Do whatever you've got to do. Just build this into the Ally with an update and everyone will love you for it because no other handheld lets you do this yet. And I'm gonna to prove to you just here that I can sign in with my controller. I do not need the keyboard anymore. Obviously I need to turn on the Ally with the power button. So I've pressed it on, right? Windows is just turned on. I'm gonna turn my controller on. Oh, now it's on, right? I'm gonna press A. There I am. I've just done that with the controller. I'm gonna press left stick in. Oh look, I've got a little spiral a bit. Obviously I'm going to uh, not show you my login, but I can now use this crazy spinny wheel of doom to find my password, which it looks horrendous, but it is actually really good. So now I've just logged in. Now I am loading up into Armory Crate as I always do. So you can see here, look, that I've got a cursor, right? So what I can do is press start and select together. And now that's disabled it. Right? And now I've gone back to controller input mode. So I'm just controlling it as if I was with the, you know, the gamepad mode selected. Oh, and you can still use the system. So if you like undocked it and your controller's still on, it still works, right? So now nothing's gonna happen because it still thinks it's in gamepad mode. Start and select together, boom, controller companion's just gone, hey, you're back at it. And now I've got a mouse and keyboard again, essentially, right? Left stick in brings up the wheel of doom so I can type and do whatever else I wanna do. You can remap absolutely everything. And if you're opening a full screen application like a game or anything, it will automatically turn it off so that the controller goes back to gamepad mode. So it's got an auto switcher. The only thing that doesn't work quite well is Armory Crate. So despite the fact that Armory Crate seems to load in full screen, I guess it's actually not because it still acts like this. So you have to turn off Control Companion and then it goes back to this, right? Like I'm not like overly fussed about that because it makes everything else so user-friendly. Like it really, 
really does. If I go down in the corner just here and open it up there, then I've got it enabled, obviously. I can turn off the controller, show button help, but if I go to settings, then you can see everything here. Run on startup, absolutely yes. Run admin pop-ups and sign-in screen with Windows 8 or above, absolutely. Play sounds on disable, yes. Show the little bubbles, yes. Show as in-app on Steam, no. Manually disable per process instead of system-wide. I've got off, and then I can go to mouse. I can change the point of speed and the acceleration because I found it a little bit fast. You can also see it's not mirrored, the ally input. So with the ally, you control with the right Right stick, but I've got it on the left stick here default because it kind of makes sense to me when I've got a controller pressing A as like left click, right click is X. So I can go onto the desktop just there and like right click. I just found it felt natural with the default settings from controller companion, so I didn't bother remapping it. But anyway, you've got that. You can go into profiles and edit bindings. So you can literally change all of these. If you hold back, that opens up a secondary amount where you can change all these again. And let's just go back to like primary or go to the Xbox button. You can even remap that. I do find with this controller, it doesn't do anything. I try to do control alt delete. Every other remap works other than the Xbox button. I don't know if that's because I've got an Elite Series 2 just here, but it just does not seem to work. So let's just use this as an example. You can do mouse. There is so many options. You've got keyboard. You could do single key, combo keys. You can do like turbo presses and macros and all sorts of stuff. You can do media. You've got modifiers. You've got windows. You can change display, start menu and all that stuff. You can turn off the controller, show virtual keyboard. You can do launch Steam from it, custom shortcuts, or just assign it to nothing. You can basically remap absolutely everything here. It's insane. You've got virtual keyboard bindings as well. Then you've got advanced with like dead zones and stuff for the joysticks, open Xbox controller emulators and chat pad. There's just so much here. Check for update as well and that will load up Steam and basically like say, yeah, update it. But I don't even have Steam running and this will now open all times, right? So this is just always on every single time I boot the Ally. And I thought when I got this and started testing it, I thought, it's never gonna let me log in. I'm still gonna need a keyboard to log in, right? Because you're gonna have to wait for the app to like boot. And I thought it would only boot after I'd already logged in. No, as soon as the system turns on, you saw it earlier, right? It just lets you go in and yeah, it is just ridiculous. This has fixed the biggest problem with the Ally X, in my opinion, for $2, or two pounds, $3, whatever it will be. It's an old app, but it absolutely works with Windows 11. It's been a life changer for me. And please, Asus, I know you're probably watching, but please implement this system-wide. Everyone will love you for it. I know it's a handheld device. Most people use it handheld, but there's a lot of people that use it docked. We've got people in our private Discord or our members that just use this as like a work system and stuff like that, or people that use it docked only for playing their games, and they would love to be able to control it with a controller, like natively, without having to run this in the background, which obviously with this, it's gonna be so lightweight it turns itself off when you're in a game as well, so I wouldn't worry about any performance here, but this is a necessity. I'd say if you own an Ally X or any handheld gaming device that's a Windows-based one, buy this app because it has absolutely changed my life. Asus, just please put this in natively. Just do it, please. So what do you think of Controller Companion? Have I just changed your life? Or did you know about this already? Because I didn't. I've, I've heard about it like in the past when I used to throw my desktop onto the TV, but I just was fine using a keyboard. But now that I'm just purely gaming on it alone, this has changed my world, it really has. Especially when I dock this with an eGPU, one cable in, get my controller, load up, done. It is perfect, yeah. Anyway, I'll stop rambling. What do you think about this? Have you learned something new? Did you know about this already? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Whilst you're down there, like this video, subscribe, become a member, and you can talk to me and AJ over in our private Discord group. And talking of AJ, go check out our podcast over here where we talk about all things gaming and check out another video from me down here. Bye.